move a little quicker on the next phases of the attack and see how we can uh, protect from those. Let's see when the when the attack moves laterally, looking for uh, the target. Uh, when uh, when it goes and installs those services, that is going to be used for extracting the data, and when actually extracts that data. from the privileged users or databases, etc. So let's first talk about a technique that is actually very, very effective, which is Privilege Identity Manager. What a Privilege Identity Management is, is uh, it, it's a way of actually uh, dealing with uh, either one, one for each or share IDs of admin and sensitive accounts. We have two ways. One is uh, uh, the, the manual way in which when anyone, uh, an, uh, a privileged user wants to use a uh, a, 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 a sensitive system, IT or otherwise, it, it manually goes into a, a, a site that actually he checks in uh, a privileged account. So he gets a user ID and password that he can use and it's unique for that session, has uh, some limits and you know when you can use it, how long you can use it, etc. And then when he's done or he actually closes the, the session with that uh, particular uh, uh, account, uh, the, the account gets actually checked in. Uh, so one of the things that we can do in those cases when you do it manually is that you get a new password automatically generated for you every time. So that password is only good for the length of that session. After that, that password is not good. And this is something that you monitor very well. You know, This is something that, uh, for example, your curator uh, actually takes a close look at who is actually using it and if they are using it you know within the right uh, times and with the right patterns etc. Uh, this is something that you can either do from from desktop as well as uh, phones because we haven't talked much about mobile but that that's actually a, a, a great way of actually uh, getting to exploit. I mean, some people say, I, I don't manage the, 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 the tablets or phones. Well, they're a computer device like anyone else. Another important thing is that, that uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, is uh, to do the segmentation of the network. But uh, we have another mechanism that uh, that allows the the check-in and check-out of the accounts to be do automatically where our desktop single sign-on is. Very nicely integrated, uh, so the user never actually gets to see uh, a, a password of a sensitive account. So if he leaves the organization or gets moved or gets fired or whatever, uh, that password is not compromised. This really limits the, the scope of, of an attack. The other thing that, 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 that is very important is to use, uh, for example, an appliance like the one that we have, our ISAM appliance, uh, to do some more segmentation of your data. Uh, you should not have a flat network, so if something gets compromised, then the, the, the scope of where the, that thing can actually go um, is actually very limited. Another thing that now that, that I, that I uh, mentioned about Curator is uh, that, that Curator can be very good at detecting, for example, the number of connections that an IP uses, because sometimes in order to disguise themselves, malware opens several several uh, connections in order to minimize the traffic. So the number of connections to one specific IP is an indication of, uh, is a giveaway that something has been uh, compromised and also the length of the connection. Uh, because when you when you browse, when you do typical things, the connection lasts very little. When, when it's uh, one of these stealthy attacks, the, the connections last longer and they send the stuff uh, by, by little drops in order to avoid uh, detection. Another technology that is very, very helpful in protecting you uh, against uh, those facets of the uh, of the APT attacks is the Guardian. Guardian not only discovers what you have, and again, don't think that you know everything that you have. They may have people that uh, instantiate some copies of a database, and you, you didn't know that they, they did that, and and the, the attacker will use that uh, to to exploit it, uh, but also inspect those databases and uh, looks at the configuration of them and basically detects vulnerabilities or things that are not best practices that are on the way that those uh, databases are actually used and they actually feed that to Curator. 
So, so curator knows when those things uh, are happening. So if, if you see some strenuous attack or some strenuous activity and gains that database, because it knows that there's a vulnerability that gives them the context to highlight that as an offense. Uh, Gadium also monitors all the database activity, all of it with a beautiful level of detail, without you having to turn the logs on, which is, you know, some people say, well, if I turn logs on on my database, my performance goes to, uh, goes to the floor. Well, with Gadium, that's not the case. Uh, it can also do things like blocked, blocking uh, unauthorized access or attempt to, to, to access a, a database. So for example, let's say that I have a backup uh, uh, administrator that have access to the database because you need to do the backups. But if we start launching SQL commands <laughs> to the database, uh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prevent him from doing that and actually going to uh, notify curator about it. So, so it, it raises the antenna against that particular and begins to monitor that particular user uh, more closely. And, and another thing that, that we do with Guardian is that we can mask the data that is being shown. So for example, we can say, well, for this particular user under these particular circumstances, I'm going to show you the, the social security numbers, but you know, only the last uh, four digits. The rest of the data is actually going to be masked. Okay, so that, that is uh, something very, very uh, helpful. Another thing that people should do is really scan their applications. And scan, uh, AppScan is a fantastic technology for actually doing that. But you should not only do it on the desktop, Okay, because today your mobile devices and mobile applications are, are, are a, a nicer target for them, and you should do the dynamic and static. Uh, and again, I'm going very quickly over these technologies. There are all the videos that talks in more detail about ev uh, every one of these technologies. But one important thing is that you should do everything that is externally faced, obviously, because that that that, that those are the easy target. But don't forget about your internal application internally facing application. Well, because remember, if we got the bad guy inside, this bad guy here, he's inside your network. So if you have applications that are only to be used uh, by, by, by internal people, uh, the, he's gonna, once the malware gets in there, he's gonna be easily compromising your data by just doing a SQL injection, from, for example, from there. Uh, so well, buffer overflow, you know, uh, any one of those attacks. Another important technology for helping you in all these phases is actually something like BigFix, so your endpoint uh, that can, you know, check on the configuration of your machine, make sure that your machine, particularly your phone, uh, is it's, uh, uh, configuring the right level, that you have the right level of antivirus, uh, that, and, and also BigFix is going to detect vulnerabilities, things that, you know, when it finds that your phone or your desktop or your tablet uh, is not configured the right way, well, it's going to detect that, notify, you know, somebody, but also, in particular, it's going to inform Curator about it. So Curator, again, can raise the antenna against those type of attacks. Uh, so so your, your, your uh, endpoint should be able to look for indicators of compromise. What, what this is, uh, is, well, can I look at the registry, some particular setup of the registry that I know that's what the, what the malware does, it goes and modify my Windows registry. Uh, can I see some processes running like, like a RAT, like a remote access terminal running? I mean, can your, can your endpoint help you with that? Uh, and, and it's something that is not only useful for detecting when that happened, but it's something that can be uh, actually used to remove uh, and, and actually notify other users that that they might be actually compromised. For example, it, we, we here in IBM, when, when we got some people that got infected with uh, some of the Java attacks, well, Big Fix uh, uh, automatically remove all those things for it. And again, don't forget that this is uh, uh, desktop and mobile. Some people think that the first thing that they do when they get in, in uh, uh, some uh, indication that they have some this type of attack, what they do, oh, I'm going to re-image that boss. Well, if you do that right away without knowing how the attack got there, you're going to get pawned again. So, re-image is, is, is might be the end of the stuff that, that you do once you know how the attack actually uh, actually happened. Uh, and another important thing, speaking more about Curator, is that, you know, Curator takes all these vulnerabilities and something that you do from vulnerability scanners, probe the net flows, 
uh, information, and, 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 and that's what it can do some, some important uh, correlation. So it, that's how you can see, for example, that you normally touch uh, 10 records a day, or how come you are touching 2,000 records now? Uh, and again, it's great on the network behavior anomaly detection, and it has two sliding windows, one for 24 hours and another one for seven days, and it can do baseline analysis, which is very important. That you start doing early. I mean, don't do it when, when, when the malware is already in there, because that will be part of the baseline. And, you know, if somebody, for example, is doing a pin scan from inside the network, why is it doing that? I mean, you're not supposed to. So let me actually, you know, put the, the magnifying glass on that particular IP and see, you know, what is that IP doing? And then let me see what other IPs are talking to that, to that external IP, you know. Uh, and, and the auto discovery capability that we talked before. An important aspect of this is also your IPS. Not only that it can do protocol analysis, not just uh, signature base, but also where do you place it? It's very important to people know oh, I have an IPS. Well, is this collecting data uh, from, from all the aspects of the network? Because if not, then it's going to be uh, transparent. And, and again, as we spoke before, uh, technologies like the next gen. Uh, IPSs like the XGS that control the data out and social media. Another aspect to be controlled if your company has a mainframe, do not assume that the mainframe is secure by nature. I mean, definitely was designed much better, it is, but if, if the configuration of that mainframe is not done properly well, don't rely on the fact that, well, not too many people, not too many hackers in China, you know, knows about the about uh, mainframe because the ones in Russia do very much know about mainframe so and so not only uh, we have technologies like CCQ that can make sure that your mainframe is configured to uh, to according to best practices but also that can monitor and inform all that uh, send that all that information to curator not on the SMS record but actually the, the detail uh, extraction of, of what you wanted to monitor on the, on the actual mainframe more, more on this in other videos